All right, it is great to be in the house of the Lord with everyone. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles to Acts chapter number two. Today is Pentecost Sunday all across the world. Uh, we are joining in the, uh, the liturgical celebration of the Spirit of God being poured out. Uh, so today we will uh, spend a few moments talking a little bit about Pentecost and certainly about uh, the impact that uh, all of this will have. Now, uh, we are also aware that there are a number of our college students uh, who are graduating or have graduated in the last couple days and the week will come. And uh, some of them, amen, yeah, are here this week and last Sunday. Amen. Yeah, other folks are relocating. So towards the end of our service, we're going to pray for them as they prepare to relocate. Uh, just want to appreciate and, and uh, thank God for all of you uh, that are here and uh, know that you could be doing uh, a whole lot of different things on a Sunday morning, but to be here with us, it's a great blessing uh, in the name of the Lord. Let's uh, start with uh, Acts chapter number two, verse number one. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord uh, is uh, recording uh, or at least showing to us how uh, he fell on the uh, first church here, and uh, it's so exciting to be able to uh, talk about this together. Uh, let's see, Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them Ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. Go down to verse number 37, and it says, uh, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. Peter said, and the Peter, and said to Peter and the apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter said to them, Repent. Be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them saying, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcome this message were baptized and that day, about 3,000 persons were added, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need, day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those 
who were being saved. It's Pentecost Sunday. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing for the reading and hearing of his word. Let us all say amen. amen. We're going to preach from the topic. Amen. Do some teaching, preaching from the title. This revolution must be televised. This revolution must be televised. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the word of God for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you. And please send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Let it rest upon me. Even the hearers of this word in Jesus' mighty name, we pray that the people of God say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, you are a channel. You are a channel. There's an interview uh, that was done by Gil Scott Heron. He uh, recorded this uh, iconic hit. We all may have heard it before called Revolution Will Not Be Televised. And in his uh, interview, he says that this song was about your mind. That you have to change your mind before you change the way you live and the way you move. The thing that's going to change people will be something that no one will ever be able to capture on film. It will just be something you see and all of a sudden you'll realize I'm on the wrong page. And, and I, 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 I was, uh, you know, certainly thinking and praying about Pentecost Sunday and these words of scripture and, and this, this whole theme just dropped into my heart because it is indeed the case that Change does not happen without your mind being transformed. Amen. Scripture says uh, that God calls us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But I also realize that a changed mind without changed actions is no change at all. Amen. And that uh, for many of us, uh, we claim to have a changed mind, but our lives still resemble the mind we had yesterday. Uh, that, that a revolution is going to come to our world, how many of you know this revolution must be televised? The kind of transformation that will happen and should happen in your life and the life of those around you cannot just be an internal process. It cannot be done.
festival. Jeez, jeez. And this festival was one of the few times that every Jewish family from different regions across the world or across the, 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 their, their nation, uh, no matter their dialect, their tribe, their culture, they all were called to the center of Jerusalem, to the Roman Empire, where they came to honor God in the temple. And I just got to believe in the divine kind of uh, strategy of God Thessalonians, verse 
Amen. You have no revolutionary power. Amen. Amen. Sherry. The scripture says that they all gathered everything that they had and they shared it one with another. If you're so sinning that you can't never allow anybody else to have anything that you have, no wonder you by yourself all the time with nothing to show for it. Amen. Mr. Blake says it all the time. Anybody wrapped up in themselves is wrapped up in a very small package. Some of us, we just small. Amen. 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 Amen.
signed up for the wars. Church of God in Christ had within its own theological and, and charter uh, a language uh, the conscientious objected. If you were a member of the Church of God in Christ, you could not be forced to serve in the military. There were folks joining the Church of God in Christ just so they wouldn't have to go to war. Now that's a revolutionary way of living. Church is fighting. We fight with each other over over members, over buildings. Uh, someone say nickels, numbers, and noise. Praise God. We fighting over money. We fighting over numbers, and we fighting over who can make the loudest, uh, whatever you want to call it. But how many of you know the Scripture says that we should follow peace with everyone and holiness, without which no one can see the Lord. Child of God, what is, what, Pastor, what, what, are you, what are you here? I'm trying to tell you that the principles of our faith must. Let's go. 